Tears, guys. Actual, literal tears. This, this second season of The Mandalorian was just extremely beautiful overall. I'm gonna, there's so much to say, but I'm gonna try to keep this short and concise as much as possible. As awesome and as amazing and as groundbreaking as the first season of The Mandalorian was, second season somehow blows it out of the water. It's so freaking good from start to finish. And even like the weakest episode, which was chapter 10 or episode two of the second season, which starred the frog lady and they wind up on this ice planet with the giant spider and things like that. Even that one I really loved. Like, that wasn't actually, like, a terrible episode or anything. People just point it out as sort of a, the weakest of the episodes. But even the weakest of the episodes is still really awesome. Like, it, it introduced us to two awesome new characters, which were the beat cops. I, mean, I love those guys. They're beat cops that are X-Wing pilots and they patrol the galaxy, right? And it also gave us murderous baby Yoda just eating baby frogs of this near-extinct species. And then, yeah, the, the fight against the spiders was amazing, and the episode was still really good overall. The best of the series, oh my god, that finale. The last episode is, for me, the best episode of the series, followed extremely closely by Chapter 13, The Jedi, which is the fifth episode of the second season. That was the Ahsoka Tano episode, and that... That episode is just difficult to describe because Rosario Dawson, who was rumored to be playing Ahsoka Tano in live action in The Mandalorian for like, ever since like the middle of like season one or something, plays Ahsoka perfectly. And the episode, which was directed by the creator of Ahsoka Tano, uh, Dave Filoni, was just created and executed just perfectly as well. But man! That last episode, especially the reveal at the end, that was the one that brought the literal tears to my eyes that I alluded to earlier, which was the reveal of freaking Luke Skywalker being the Jedi to train Baby Yoda slash Grogu. Uh, the name Grogu, while, while, while I mention it, it's alright. <laughs> when it was mentioned, I was like, I was the same as most people. I was like, Grogu? Really? But it grows on you. It's not, it doesn't give you the best first impression, but it's not a terrible name either. It's a very Star Wars name too, so Grogu it is. The Jedi to train freaking Grogu slash the baby Yoda we all know and love is freaking Luke Skywalker. And that just brought a tear to my eye because essentially this just became the season of redemption. The first redemption, of course, is Boba Fett, which we'll get to later. But in a way, it's also a redemption to the character of Luke Skywalker. First of all, his entrance is pure badass. It's like he, co he comes in in this lone X-Wing and Bo-Katan's like, Oh great, we're saved. Eye roll and everything because it's a lone X-Wing that doesn't even pick up the comms. And he comes out of the cockpit and is like, Oh freaking A, Jedi! And then the slow reveal of the clues as who he is, the, the all black garb the one gloved hand and the green lightsaber it's luke freaking skywalker but then you never know right they might throw you for a loop but then if it wasn't luke skywalker i would have become legit mad and then he comes in and he does a rendition like a, a, a straight homage to the darth vader corridor massacre scene from one of my favorite star wars movies ever rogue one but it's the good guy version, you know? So it's like Darth Vader tearing apart these, these rebel soldiers in this terrifying corridor. It's Luke Skywalker tearing apart single-handedly and rather easily. And sort of disappointingly too, because like the Death Troopers were sort of hyped throughout most of the season. And then they just get one shot by Luke Skywalker in like two, or two minutes or something like that. That's sort of disappointing, but then, then again, it's not, it's not that big a deal compared to the payoff of the scene. So he one-shots all these death troopers and is shot extremely similarly to how that Darth Vader corridor scene is from Rogue One. And it is just beautiful. And then the reveal at the end that it's him 
tears, guys, literal tears. And I don't shed tears during movies very often, even like the really sad ones. But this one brought legit tears to my eyes because it was such a beautiful moment. And the reason it was such a beautiful moment is because Luke Skywalker's character was sort of, sort of thrown out the window. It's sort of disrespected and turned around on its head in like episode 8, The Last Jedi. So in Force Awakens, episode 7, we have this, you know, right before the credits, we see Luke and everyone's cheering. It's the return of Luke Skywalker that everyone's been waiting for for the past, what, 30 years or something like that. But then he's a terrible character in the next movie. He's like a cowardly loser that literally doesn't do anything until the very end of the movie, which I believe is the primary reason why people despise The Last Jedi so much. I mean, there's a lot of things wrong with that movie, but I, for one, that's the thing that I hated the most out of that movie, and I think a lot of people agree with that, is how they treated Luke Skywalker in that, in that particular movie. And again, it was like something fans have waited for for so long, and then the reveal was like the most painful gut punch, you know? And this this finale of The Mandalorian Season 2 was just the complete opposite of that. It's just Luke Skywalker at his literal coolest. It's like he's never looked this cool, right? I mean, he was he's awesome throughout the original trilogy, Episodes 4, 5, and 6. But he's never shown this much power and this much cool factor in a single scene, right? And I will say, I thought the CG was really good. Much better than Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia. And the same movie that I lo absolutely love, which is um, Rogue One. It still, it still has that Uncanny Valley feel to it. And yeah, you can still tell from afar that it's a CG face on top of a real actor. But it's still really good. It's much improved. The technology is much improved since Rogue One. So I applaud them for that. And like I mentioned before, the other redemption arc is Boba Fett. And the reason it's a redemption arc because in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, that character was done dirty as well because he essentially got beat up by a blind man with a stick. And his episode, Chapter 14, The Tragedy, which is the sixth episode of Season 2, was also pretty perfect, you know? Like, he comes in, reclaims his armor, he's not a bad guy, he helps out the hero, and he's as badass as all of the Boba Fett fans out there wanted him to be, and maybe more. Because, like, Boba Fett fans have always said, oh, he's like the most badass Star Wars character and things like that. Well, he certainly looks like one of the most badass characters, aside from, like, Darth Vader and stuff. But he never really does anything really significant in the series. Yes, he's the guy who who tracks down and catches Han Solo for the Empire. But beyond that, he's like, he just stands there looking cool. Like literally that's all he does in the original trilogy. But in Mandalorian season two, he's just legit awesome in everything he does, how he speaks, how he moves. He like beats up a whole platoon of stormtroopers single-handedly and rather easily in the most awesome Star Wars way possible in chapter 14. And again, it is just perfect. And I can say that throughout the entirety of season two of The Mandalorian, that this season was pretty perfect. So naturally I give it a 10 out of freaking 10. And man, if you have not seen The Mandalorian, like what are you waiting for if you're a Star Wars fan? or you're like a fan of like anything pop culture or fiction at all, you should really check this out. This is the best Star Wars anything in a long time. And I can't believe that it's as good as it is. And oh yeah, before I end this, of course I have to like uh, mention the Book of Boba, right? The Book of Boba Fett, which is hinted at as being the next series after this. So. It's sort of hinted that there won't be a season three, which is understandable because Din Djarin, the Mandalorian's mission and story is over. He got the child to a safe place, right? So definitely the character is going to continue on in some way or form, but most likely if the character is getting a season three, it's going to be down the line because it's hinted that the next 
at least the next Mandalorian thing is gonna be the Book of Boba Fett. It's so freaking awesome, like, Bib Fortuna took over from after Jabba died in uh, Return of the Jedi, and he's now the new Hut or whatever. And he's, like, extremely fat like Jabba is, and Boba Fett just tears into everyone and takes his place, and that begins the Book of Boba Fett. It's like, he's gonna become the number one gangster in the galaxy. Maybe that's the story, but either way, it's gonna be badass, and I'm so looking forward to it. And aside from that, again, like, there's a lot more Star Wars coming. There's the Cassian Andor series and the Rogue Squadron movie. The Ahsoka Tano series is another one that I'm super looking forward to. And, like, it's amazing that they're just not resting their laurels on The Mandalorian. Like, it's gonna be Mandalorian forever for, like, a hundred seasons, like The Simpsons or whatever. They're confident to end the story of The Mandalorian and move on to other things. Because, yeah, it's the Star Wars galaxy slash universe you know there's so many characters so many cool characters to highlight there's so many parts of the galaxy to explore and oh yeah the one i'm looking forward to the most most likely is the obi-wan series because ewan mcgregor was definitely my favorite part of the prequel trilogy and i am looking forward to him and hayden christensen like reuniting and i'm sure that series is going to be good as well Coming back to talking about Mandalorian Season 2, again, it's pretty perfect. It's much, it's somehow much better than Season 1. Not that Season 1 needed improving upon, but it's just great that they made an already perfect season even more perfect, which is, I didn't know that was possible. So I highly recommend it if you're a Star Wars fan. You most likely have already seen it, but for those that haven't, I highly recommend checking these seasons out now. Watch Mandalorian seasons one and two now they're just some of the best fiction that I've consumed in my life and I have seen quite a few let me tell you so I want to know if you guys thought the same thing did you think that the Mandalorian season two was also perfect did you find some flaws in it did you just not like it at all if so please leave me a comment down below because I really want to know and we can talk about it there and this has been Asian action actor if you like my review of the mandalorian season 2 please click like down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of my awesome content and while you're here you might want to check out the other series and movie reviews that i have already done on my channel